hey, I got this Ustar VTR Max NAS, and I realized there is no really good setup guide online, so I decided I'm going to make a quick video showing you how to set this thing up. Everybody reviewing this box called this a beast NAS, and actually it is. It has very powerful Ryzen CPU inside, DDR5 memory, it comes with six hard drive bays or SSD bays, and the first bay which is dedicated for NVMe SSD and there is also one NVMe hidden at the bottom of the NAS so before we start setting this thing up let's have a look at the connections it has so it comes with SD card slot which allows you easily to copy your photos and videos from your camera off to the NAS it comes with USB ports at the front either USB type A or C and it has also a customizable display so you can see what is going on with your drives, with your CPU, with your memory, you can configure this thing. So let's have a look at the back. And here you have two optical SFP ports. So you can connect your 10 gigabit switch like Unify. And then you get two 2.5 gigabit uh, ports that are backwards compatible. So you can connect either to your existing one gigabit network or faster 2.5 gig. You also get very fast USB 4 connection. And there's also Oculink port, which allows you to connect external PCIe cards like graphics card. And then you get two USB 3 ports, HDMI port and DP port. So that's for your monitors. This thing comes with a massive power supply, which is 239 watts. This means you can use very power hungry hard drives in there. Biggest capacities there are. So before we power this thing on, you need to know that these are SSD or hard drive compatible bays. So I used SSDs that are SATA based SSDs in there, but you can also use hard drives in there depending on what speed you want to achieve. These are not the best design trays, so it takes a little bit of effort to actually get those drives in. Also, those trays are very bendy, so be careful with those drives or SSDs. Also, maybe put this NAS somewhere away from children because there is no locks on these bays, so they can easily remove drive or two and destroy your data. And also remember the first bay is not for hard drives. This is for your NVMEs. So we're gonna use four NVMEs in this tray. You need to remember that there are speed limitations. Two of these NVMEs will work at 2000 megabytes second and other two is 4000 megabytes second limitation. So remember, never remove this tray. This bay should definitely have a lock. You don't need to fill all of the bays. You can start with two or three bays and add more drives later on but we fill them all up with SATA SSDs. The first bay has four NVMEs, and we're gonna also add fifth NVMe at the bottom. I also need to remember that there is speed bottleneck of 4,000 megabytes second, which is okay for Gen 3 SSDs, which is around 3,500 megabytes second, or Gen 4 SSD, which would be around 5,000 megs a second. So just remember, there are these speed bottlenecks before you buy the latest NVMe. So in order to install this fifth NVMe, you need to release these screws on the side and remove the panel. And then you'll see there is one NVMe slot there for you. We'll use Gen 3 SSD in this slot. Slot it in and screw it into place and that's it. In order to remove this cover, you will need a key like this. Also a tip regarding the drives, make sure you wipe all partitions if you are reusing them from other NAS or computer systems. It's gonna simplify our setup process. Okay, before we power it on, we'll need the keyboard, a mouse, a monitor. We will also need a USB where we can install Unraid operating system because this box comes with no operating system at all. It's just the hardware. So get a simple USB, plug it into Windows or Mac so download Unraid tool, which will allow you to install OS on this USB stick. Then plug this USB stick into the NAS, any USB port. Connect your keyboard, connect your monitor, your LAN connection and the power. I wish this power was lockable, so accidentally you wouldn't pull the cable out, but it is what it is. Okay, now we're ready to power it on and you get this really lovely Ustar welcome screen, which you will be able to customize later on. If this NAS is not pre-configured to boot using USB stick, what we just prepared, it will go into BIOS mode and will ask us to provide which media we want our operating system to load from. So we're gonna choose USB and save the settings, then reboot the NAS and we'll start Unraid operating system. 
You will then see on the screen IP address which has been issued for this NAS by your router. You can now open your web browser and type that IP address or if you are giving a name to your NAS when you were preparing this USB stick earlier on, you can just type the name of the NAS.local and that should take you to the admin panel. Otherwise use IP address here. So you can use your IP address in your web browser. The first thing you want to do is secure your password and change your password to something really difficult because your data depends on this. Or you can even create SSH key which will make it more complicated for someone to log into the system. But otherwise this is where you will see all of your hard drives and SSDs. Unraid is not like a traditional RAID where you merge disks together and have faster speeds or more reliability. Unraid treats all disks separately but not in a RAID fashion. If any of those drives fail, your data is only lost on that particular drive. But the downside of this is that you don't get speeds like you would get from RAID 5 or RAID 10 because you will be reading from a single drive at any given time. Your speed will be limited to that particular drive. So if you're okay with that, you can add all these drives into one big volume. So here in array devices, this is where you're gonna choose how many drives you want to put in this RAID. And then it's gonna ask you about the parity, which means the protection. This means how many drives can fail without losing any data. So it never actually loses the data because bits of information will be stored across all drives. So most popular choice is one drive redundancy. So let's use one of those SATA SSDs as a parity drive and we'll add the rest of the SSDs for normal storage. So our next task is pool devices. This is our cache. So we can choose how many SSDs we want to use for caching. Let's say we want to use four. Cache means that all data written to the box will be first landing on SSDs. This can improve the performance massively. But also you need to make sure that you have your cache NVMEs protected, either in RAID 1, which is a mirror, or RAID 5 if you're having three or more SSDs. In our case, we're going to set up RAID 10, which gives you the best performance. So we can also test those 10 gigabit ports, because as I said, unraid is limited to this single drive bottleneck. So, so let's create SSD pool in RAID 10 to maximize the performance, and then we can test those 10 gigabit speeds. So let's choose four drives. Let's say two WD reds and two add link NVMEs. And at this point, you'll click start. If you have parity, it will start building the parity data to keep your data safe. So now you can see the array is built and we'll need to delete the data on these drives. So let's click yes. I want to delete the data. Click format. I will wipe those drives clean before we use them. So now formatting is completed. We can start using our NAS. So if you have several people in your office, you might want to create several users here. I will also show you a little trick how to create a RAID if you don't like unraid system where they are reading from single drive at a given time and you want to use RAID 10. You may actually allocate just one or two drives for regular unraid setup and the rest of them you can set up in RAID 10 or RAID Z and ZFS file system. All this is possible through pool devices, through your cache. So if you click on cache, you'll see that by default it uses RAID 1 and we want to change that. So you have ability to change it to RAID 5, RAID 6 or RAID 10. I'll choose RAID 10 and click balance. The default file system is going to be BTRFS. Let's click done. And now we have set these NVMEs in RAID 10, which means those four NVMEs are split in two halves in a mirror mode, which maximizes the performance. You can also go back to main and stop your array anytime. This will not delete your data. This is just stopping array. Then you can go into your cache. You can erase the pool, confirm that you want to do it, proceed. And now you can choose what file system you want to use. You can use ZFS and then choose RAID Z1, Z2, Z3, or Stripe or Mirror option. So probably this is the safest way to set up your cache using ZFS file system. Or you can use your BTRFS system and choose your preferred RAID. I'll stick with RAID 10. Apply, done. Now I'll start again the array. So if you go into settings, you can see RAID 10 is set up. So that's all you need to know about your hard drives and SSDs. So now we need to go to shares, which will create a folder that you can access over your network. So I'll click add share, let's say unraid, choose primary storage 
either array or cache so where you want your data first to live on those fast ssds or hard drives so i want maximum performance i'll use cache if you want to have this particular folder linked with a slower media choose array i'll go for cache then you can choose some extra protection copy and write and then secondary storage array which means data will be moved from ssd storage to hard drive storage or SATA SSD storage, whatever you have in those slower bays over the night with something called mover. So you have options here, high water, fill up or most free. I'll choose high water and I'll click add share. And then if you want to connect remotely to your NAS through this SMB share, you need to click export yes. Otherwise you can hide your network share configuration. And you can choose this folder to be either public or private. I'll choose secure, click apply. And then the next step, you can choose which user has access to this folder. So I'll choose Ed has read and write permissions, click apply, and then we click compute all. And now we should be able to connect to this folder remotely. So on your Mac, you will need to open your finder, click go, connect to server, then either use your IP address or your domain. I'll use nas.local and then you will be asked to type in the password and you're in. Now you can start creating folders, test unraid, upload some files and if you go back to your unraid you should be able to also access those files here. So if you click unraid you can see the folder we just created so you can either use this web interface or you can use your SMB share through your Finder or your Windows Explorer if you use Windows. If you, if you need more users accessing this SMB share, you can create those users here. Otherwise, you can go to Settings and enable Docker. This will allow you to install all sorts of apps. Very useful. So you can turn your NAS into hundreds of different things. Otherwise, you go to Apps, Install Community Apps. So you can turn this NAS into so many things. And one of those things is Netflix alternative, Plex. Unraid is probably the best system out there for managing Docker. It's very easy to set things up because you literally need to just fill the form and submit it and click apply and it's done. And if you want remote access, I also recommend installing Tailscale. This gives you a VPN access remotely, very secure, very fast. The other thing that people would choose is image. It's alternative to Google Photos or Image Frame if you want to have frame. Let's configure it, click apply. And there you go, you have your image installed. So you get lots of options here to install. Otherwise, this is it. This is how you set up your Ustar. If you want to see how to set up TrueNAS instead of Unraid on this thing, do let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching. See you next time.